And Money Box Live starts after the 3 o'clock news. 03 700 100 444. First on BBC Radio 4, here's Steve Hewitt with The Media Show. Hello. This killing field is being openly filmed. The rest of this video is just too gruesome to broadcast. That's what Channel 4 said then, but not now. That very same footage and more depicting widespread death and injury, executions and ghastly sexual assaults allegedly committed by Sri Lankan army in their military campaign to finish off the Tamil Tigers will be shown on Channel 4 next Tuesday. But should it be? Some of the government's grander plans for local TV, much discussed on this programme, appear to be foundering. Ben Fenton, our man from the FT, tells us what's going on. And tonight sees the launch of a new sitcom on BBC One. But In With The Flins is based on an old US format and made by a very successful American producer. So will it work? But first, that Channel 4 documentary based on mobile phone footage from the recent war in Sri Lanka. As you heard a moment ago, some of it has been broadcast before, but not much on the ground that it was simply too graphic. But now, in Sri Lanka's killing field, through broadcast next Tuesday evening, Channel 4 has decided to broadcast much more of it. <laughs> You can't see them, of course, but the pictures that go with those sounds are genuinely horrific. There are hundreds of horribly injured and dying people, many of them women and children, and many of them apparently having already sought shelter in clearly marked hospitals. Naked bodies of women who appear to have been sexually assaulted before or after being killed, and actual executions, where unusually you can see the shots being fired and the moment of death that follows. It is an unquestionably affecting programme that argues that elements, at least of the Sri Lankan military, should be properly investigated and tried for war crimes. The Sri Lankan government, meanwhile, disputes the authenticity of some of the footage and rejects the allegations. But does Channel 4 need to use such explicit images to make its point? And is it in the any event right for TV to broadcast such material? Well, I'm joined by Professor of Journalism, one-time editor of Channel 4, Channel 4 News, and until recently a trustee, or B the BBC trustee, should I say, and chair of the BBC's the BBC Trust Editorial Standards Committee, no less, Richard Tate, and long-standing head of news and current affairs at Channel 4, Dorothy Byrne. Uh, Dorothy, if I can start with you. Once you did say, your channel did say, that this material was too graphic, you said it then but not now, you described this as possibly the most horrific footage Channel 4 has ever shown. Why are you showing it? It definitely was too gruesome and graphic to be shown at 7 o'clock. That's pre-watershed. This program goes out at 11 o'clock at night with very, very strong warnings telling you exactly what's in the program. And actually, the worst program of the executions doesn't come till something like 20 to midnight. So I'm sure um, that it is uh, right in that sense to show it. I also is it, believe is it justified? Though? I also believe it's absolutely justified. It has been written... Uh, the UN panel has reported that there is very credible evidence of massive war crimes having occurred in the Sri Lankan civil war and its aftermath. No action has taken place following that, the publication of that report. And I think that the moment has come where people just have to see it. They have to see what happened. And when you see it, then decide for yourselves if you are ambassadors to the UN, if you are prepared to do nothing. And decide for yourselves if you are members of um, the public in Britain and around the world, if you are prepared to see in our time, not in the Second World War, but in our time, terrible, terrible events like that. Okay, but, he, he, but I suppose he, he, here might be the question. You take the execution scenes, you see three people at least, and, and more later, but you see three people shot at close range in the head. That's on with the Kalashnikov, they're blindfolded, they've got hands behind their backs, they're shot, they fall over. You see them fall over, you see the blood coming out of their head. Now, conventionally, I've one has seen execution scenes, tragically, previously on TV, where the moment at which the bullet is fired, the screen freezes, and then a wide shot shows the bodies lying where they were shot. You don't, it, convention, generally speaking, you don't show the moment. Now, why do you need to show the moment? You need to show the moment, because this is not just a TV programme. This is evidence. If you don't show the moment, the people who are claiming that these executions did not take place will carry on saying these executions did not take is place. Is that really credible? I mean, you... you yeah, they are... They... they I, mean, I, know, I know they're disputing it. People continue to say that none of this 
happen. But, but, but most, of your, most, of your, but most of your viewers aren't going to say that, Dorothy. They're going to look at it and say, well, they're, they're, they're not going to dispute the fact. They're not going to question the authenticity of it. And the Australian government do. We'll come to that. They're not going to question the authenticity of it because you choose, you choose not to show the moment at which but they die. But if we don't show it, and the Sri Lankan government says it didn't happen, and other people say here is credible evidence of executions, how are you, the viewer, the member of the public, the ambassador to the UN, to make up your mind for yourself unless you actually see it? It is the... I, I can't think of any other circumstances in which we would show this footage if we did not feel we absolutely had to show it as overwhelming evidence of uh, war crime, of... of Okay. potential Just war crimes which before, should be investigated. Okay. Be before, before I go to Richard, let me ask you one question specifically then. The Sri Lankan government ha do say that these images, are, they, they claim that they're not authentic, uh, and they've claimed it repeatedly. They said the same to us in a statement. They deny they're authentic. How do you know that they're authentic? Or what behind, what's behind your claim that they are genuine? Uh, we have uh, obviously employed forensic pathologists and also experts in video technology, so has the UN. And all these experts say that all the evidence indicates that these are genuine and authentic footage. And the I UN accepts that? The, the, of the footage which the UN it has not examined all the footage, but the footage that it has shown, which is some of those key footage of executions, yes. Okay. Richard Tate, do you agree, you've seen, you've seen it, uh, and the audience will see it next week of course, but uh, do you agree that it's necessary to broadcast this in, in this form to make this point? Well, I think it's a very good programme, uh, and a very important programme, and I think it's been made <coughs> uh, by people with uh, journalistic integrity. I think the images at the, in the last third are at the absolute outer limit of what is acceptable um, in broadcast television. Um, but I think given the context of 11 o'clock at night and, and warnings, I think you can certainly make an editorial case for including them. Um, you're in an area where... But is it necessary? Uh, well, I think uh, that's a, a fair question. I think, I think it is necessary uh, to show quite a lot of what happened in order to... Because of the nature of the video, one of the problems we've got now is we've got helmet camera video, we've got mobile phone video, we've got what is rather crudely called some kind of trophy video shot by soldiers. This which some of this is? Yes, this material is very difficult to deal with because it's not been shot with any thought of guidelines or what's proper and what's not proper to show. It's just raw material. And I think the rawness of it and the inability of the program makers to edit it in the conventional way that you would a conventional piece of news reporting means you either sort of go for broke and end up with some pretty terrible images or you have to say, well, we're not going to show it but at all. Are you bothered about this, though, from primarily from a kind of taste and decency point of view, or are you bothered about it from a editorial policy point of view? In other words, I mean, one issue that comes up with mobile phone footage, you got, and the, the film said this in fairness, you don't know who shot it, you don't know why they shot it, so in so far that might be important to me. If, if an ITN camera crew shoots it, you're kind of reasonably comfortable that you know what they're up to, whereas this stuff, you have no idea. Uh, is that your problem, or is it taste and decency? I, I, I'm worried about two things. I think, first, there is a point at which the audience will not watch and it's all about audience expectations. I agree with Dorothy, 7 o'clock, Channel 4 News made absolutely the right decision not to show that material at 7 o'clock in the evening before the watershed. Although in this case, I can put it on my Sky Plus, my V Plus box and watch it in time alike. And, and that's my second point, which is this is the beginning of a very long debate about what we're going to do with some extremely explicit, violent and distasteful images which are going to be easily available um, via the internet, will be available via your TV set before very long. And traditionally, uh, the main news organizations have said, look, the stuff, we know it's there. Frankly, the moment of death is in the ITN library, the BBC library, and the Sky News library. It's just that editors and producers, in the main, not always, have said we won't show it. But, it, but it, now it's it, out there, Steve, in, in enormous quantities. But, it, it, but isn't there an argument say, look, why not trust us with the public? We can deal with it. Show well, I, th us. I think these images are very, very uh, disturbing. I, I've watched the program. As I say, I think it's a very, very good program. I don't think I'll watch it again. And I'm a, I'm a traditional conventional experienced news editor I've seen some terrible things but I've seen it once and you know what I may not want to see it again because I think the images are very disturbing Dorothy is there anything that you wouldn't show I mean for example in this footage is there anything, is there anything you've held back we've um, hidden the genitalia of both men and women because we felt 
there was no justification in showing that. Uh, it is disturbing to think of these images being available and that's why you have to have an overwhelming justification and the overwhelming justification for me is the need for justice for 40,000 innocent people who are not being given justice anywhere in the world and where people are denying that the events ever even took place and it's terrible to see women executed and to see the way that the women are thrown around after they've been killed but when you see it you know it happened I think is what most people would think do you think that this is can you only do this because these are people who are live who we don't know who live a very long way away who you know who are different to us I think many of us in, in lots of ways I mean there was a, there was a famous case in the BBC but the BBC showed some footage uh, and in a documentary you're actually looking at different coverage of the, uh, the way different channels had covered the Gulf War uh, the, the Iraq War I think and, and Al Jazeera had shown some British soldiers bodies lying by a roadside the BBC repeated the footage and in fifth of I remember Richard the governor has criticised the BBC having shown it I mean is there so can, can we show death and injury of this sort when it's them but not when it's us I think there's a very specific issue which is the likelihood of somebody seeing footage of somebody that they know. Now actually we have a lot of people in this country from Sri Lanka. They will on the whole be aware of this program coming up. I think a lot of them will choose not to watch I'm sorry, it. The point I'm making though is that the, 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 the application of standards of taste and decency, what's acceptable and what isn't, seems strikes me as different if they're sort of if it's you know, if it's here you wouldn't show half of that. I mean, we, in, in Chechnya, we, we, show we didn't show all sorts that of that we show um, photographs and film from Belson, and there are scenes in this film very similar to scenes in Belson, and Germans and, and Jewish Germans lived and Polish Germ Jews lived uh, very near to us. I, I think when it comes to war crimes... And this is exceptionally explicit footage, and there is yeah, other footage around, but that's explicit of other conflicts which we haven't used. It, uh, I think in the war in Bosnia, people didn't film in the way that they are filming now. Perpetrators didn't film, and I, it, it might be different now. I don't want. I I would like to be able to say we'll never again show footage like this. I hope I will never sh show footage like this again in the whole of my life. And it's the first time I've ever done it, and I hope it's the last time I ever do it. Richard, do you detect, as someone who's been listening a long time, is there a, is there a trend here amongst broadcasters? Do you think to become to, to push this? Is, is there a, is there a, is there any sense of is there any sort of well, gas of competition between broadcasters? Any sense of that? Do you think? I think that's the danger. Uh, I, I don't think it's happening yet, <clears throat> but I think if you had a sort of arms race in horror, um, there's plenty of stuff on the web. Um, to provide you with the raw material and I think I think what Dorothy said is very important that she regards this as a wholly exceptional program in the context of a wholly exceptional story which Channel 4 News has done well to investigate um, I do think that as we move into a converged world where people will be able to access news images from all sorts of sources I think newsrooms will be under pressure uh, to push it a bit to say well look we, they can see this on this news channel or that news channel which is coming to our newsroom and we're not doing it uh, you know, have, we, have we lost our sort of have we lost our, pro our preeminence as the people who people turn to to see what's going on and so what, what's that? the correct response to that well the correct response to that is that people have got to watch it in order to, be, to, to, to understand it and to get the, the full benefit if you like of knowing what happened in Sri Lanka, you have to watch it, and some of this stuff, I think, is unwatchable to most people. So just to go back to the so end, do you think it was? Do you think it was necessary to show, in the execution case, for example, to show the whole sequence uncut? Dorothy said, if you don't, people may question the authenticity of it. I, I can see that some who would otherwise question the authenticity might carry on doing so. They question it anyway. I'm not. I don't know whether you have to see the moments. Do you? I'm not sure. I mean, I think um, I, I'm. I, I, if, if it had been my decision. Um, I probably would have suggested the broadcaster that we did show it, but I wouldn't have felt that the programme had been ruined if the broadcaster had said, no, I don't think we should show that. OK, well, um, many thanks for that. Uh, and um, you can see that next Tuesday night on Channel 4. Uh, the Swag government have told us, not a, a disputing, they dispute the authenticity of the, of the footage. They also say they, de they categorically deny the allegation that it deliberately targeted its own civilians. 
They say this is an exercise which is carried out by a small section of international media at the behest of certain civil society organisations and with the blessings of the separatist forces living outside Sri Lanka with the final objective of pushing Sri Lanka back to war and is only an endeavour to lacerate the wounds that Sri Lanka is attempting to heal. Anyway, Richard Tate, Dorothy Byrne, many thanks indeed. And if you've thought about any of that or anything else you hear in the programme, you are, as always, very welcome to email us, the media show at bbc.co.uk.